everybody. We are here for another one of my webinars on our Get Microsoft 365, Get Developer Certified, Microsoft 365 Developer Certified. Um, today, we are going to be talking about Office add-ins. That's our next thing that we're going to be covering uh, in our in our session today. Um, if you would, if you would, just before we get started here, can you raise your hand in Zoom? Make sure you can see and hear me. Should be able to see and hear me. Got a bunch of hands up. That's good. So everybody can see and hear me. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and let's get started with this. What are we going to cover today? We are going to be covering, again, uh, the Office add-ins workload for uh, our uh, Microsoft 365 uh, Developer Certified um, series. So really quick, let's go let me do a quick little introduction here so you guys know who, who this is. Uh, my name is Andrew Connell. Uh, I'm an MVP for Office Development. I've been doing SharePoint development specifically for a very long time, 15 plus years, 17 years, something like that. Um, and I was also uh, heavily involved with uh, working with Microsoft and getting the certification uh, together. So come back to that in just a few minutes. I'm a, uh, also a member of the Patterns and Practices core team with Microsoft 365. Um, we do a lot of SharePoint community-based work. Um, and then I uh, also have a podcast I co-host uh, that has weekly episodes that come out every Tuesday. And uh, also a founder for, uh, of the training company uh, Voitanos, where I have a SharePoint framework development course uh, that I focus on. You got my contact info there that you can see. Let's start talking a little bit now about this exam. What can you guys expect to see on this exam? The exam, the Microsoft 365 uh, workloads are what's gonna be covered in this exam and in this certification. Um, we've got five separate workloads. This is our fifth webinar and we've kind of gone all the way around the circle. We started with identity at the very top, then we went to Microsoft Graph, then SharePoint, we talked about Microsoft Teams, and today we're going to talk about Office add-ins, and we're talking about that specific workload in our um, uh, in the uh, the certification. That's what we're going to focus on uh, today. Come on, PowerPoint, keep moving. All right, so uh, a little bit of background for those of you who have not tuned in to any of the previous webinars. Um, why should you listen to me on this? So I was involved with working with Microsoft on helping them. Uh, define, identify and define the topics that people uh, should know and should be tested on uh, to be considered a Microsoft certified developer or Microsoft 365 certified developer. And so what does that mean? Um, what topics are covered? Stuff like that. Um, the If you want to know more about the process, about the exam and how Microsoft comes up with uh, the topics and what that whole process looks like, Join me in two days for the last webinar in this series where we're going to do a behind the scenes. But you want to know, you know, why should you listen to me on this? Well, not only was I involved in this whole thing, um, but I also took the exam. I also helped them build some of the content, um, the self-paced uh, training content. And then I also um, have been involved with the, um, uh, I also took the exam. Uh, and so you can see here from this slide, this I'm showing you my results, just to kind of show, hey, you know, he has taken the exam. Um, I took the beta exam. That's why you see beta at the top there. And what that means is I took it when they had a limited uh, people that they were letting take it for a very discounted price um, because they wanted some feedback on um, not only the performance that people had on the exam, but they also wanted to see uh, how everybody uh, performed on the exam uh, primarily. They wanted to make sure that, you know, is are people passing that should be passing? Are people uh, getting questions correct that they should be getting correct? Um, or are they not getting questions correct that they that they should have been getting correct? Um, so, oops, what have I done my PowerPoint? PowerPoint just got screwed up. Hold on one second, let me fix that. There, that should be right. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that's all. That's the kind of stuff that they wanted to focus on. Now you can see here, you know, each uh, there's different areas, different workloads that you're going to be tested on for the exam uh, for the certification. Um, you'll have workloads such as uh, identity, uh, so that's Microsoft um, uh, Azure AD type stuff. Um, you'll have stuff related to um, uh, what is it? Uh, um, uh, Microsoft Graph, Microsoft SharePoint, uh, Microsoft Teams. And you have different questions for each one of those different sections. And each 
workload takes up a percentage of the number of questions on the certification. Um, today, what we're gonna look at again is Office add-ins. And I show you here, you can see that that was my weakest area uh, when I took the exam. And from the experience that I've asked everybody else, in fact, I got a question for you in a minute. Um, that's what everyone that's come to all these different webinars, um, that's what they've said as well, that this is the weakest area uh, for everybody. So I hope that this webinar will give you some good tips on what things you should study for uh, for to take the certification. Um, actually, I'm, and I'm curious if you don't mind me asking a question here. Um, take a look at the um, uh, take a look at the 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 poll that I just posted. Um, that I'm curious how many of you are actually planning on taking the exam um, to get certified. Uh, how many of you are just thinking about it? How many of you have already taken it? Just curious. So we got a most people have answered here that's interesting so we got almost 90 percent of you has said uh that yes you're planning on taking it and the rest of you are saying yep i want to learn more about it so i might i might end up taking it um now i got another question for you too before we really start to dive into this so let me go ahead and launch this one there are two questions with this um and i, I then i want to do a little bit of housekeeping stuff that i meant to do just a minute ago um so um, first question, both questions are very similar. And it's basically, of all five of these workloads, question one is, which one do you have the most experience? Or when do you, which one do you have the, um, uh, or you feel the strongest at for tech, or on the, the technology? Um, and then the second question is the inverse. Which one are you the weakest at? And which one, or which one do you have the least amount of experience? Okay. And so like everybody, same responses I've gotten every single time, all right? So most of you have answered all of these questions. Let me go ahead and share this with you so you can see this. So first you can see what are you the strongest at? By far and away at SharePoint. No surprise, I know a lot of people are on my email list and that means that you're on my, um, that means that you get a lot of this stuff or that you get a lot of the, the um, uh, you, that's how you found out about these webinars. Uh, and then for the weakest, well, it's far and above, it's office add-ins. So I'm hopeful that this webinar will actually help you guys uh, a bit and understand what things you need um, to learn on uh, what's available to you. All right, so, oh, wrong window. There we go. Now, let's talk a little bit here about the certification, and then I'm going to come back. I see somebody asked a question about where the recordings are available. Just stay tuned. Give me a second. I'm going to answer that in just a minute. You'll see that on the next slide. Okay, so let's talk a little bit now about the exam um, as well. So what does it mean? How do you get certified? How does Microsoft measure people being certified? Um, how do you, um, let's see, what, else, what was the other question I wanted to, I wanted to do? Um, uh, what was the other one? It was, uh, oh yeah. and. Um, uh, how uh, what is it? How do I get certified? Like, what's the process? So first, let's start at the bottom of the slide, right? Um, Microsoft measures developers in three different levels. You've got the foundational level, you've got the associate level, and you've got the expert level. Foundational level, that is someone who is like a technical salesperson. That is someone who can walk into a customer, they can talk to that customer, a customer can say, here are the different things I'm trying to achieve. Here's the stuff that I'm trying to, that I wanna be able to solve, a business need that I'm trying to solve. And when you, when they, um, that person should be able to take those results that are, or take, the, take that answer that, it, that comes from the customer and they should be able to design or model out an application um, with the different technologies that are available to them. Say like, you know, you wanna be able to do this, you wanna be able to do that. Here's how you go about um, doing all of that uh, stuff. Here's how you end up doing it. Um, the, the, um, but you maybe, they don't have the experience to be able to go build it and actually implement that themselves. Um, the next uh, level up is the associate level. And that is someone who should be able to go build the system without any help. And that is someone um, that, Microsoft likes to say that they've got four years of experience, but I mean, they understand that not everybody has four years of experience. Um, so they, you know, and, and not only that, it's, I mean, you look at technologies like SharePoint Framework and Microsoft Teams, they haven't been around for four years. So 
it's impossible. But it's that level of experience is what they're looking for. They want to make sure that people have that level of experience. Um, they have that level of experience. Okay. Um, another uh, thing, uh, another uh, uh, expert, another level is the expert level. And that's somebody who could teach. The certification that Microsoft has, has provided, the Microsoft 365 Certified Associate Developer, that's that middle link you see there on the slide, that is, um, that's the certification that you're, that you're going for. So they're gonna test you at the associate level. Now the way, that you, the way you achieve that certification is by passing an exam. And the exam is the MS-600. It's called Building Applications and Solutions with Microsoft 365 Core Services. You can see that at the top of the slide. Now, this that when you take the exam and when you pass it, your trophy is the certification. All right, think about it like that. So to get certified, you have one prerequisite: pass the exam. So we're going to go through, and uh, in the, in the previous uh, webinars I've done, um, you can. Um, uh, in the previous webinars I've done, you can see where you have a list of all of those, um, uh, the different workloads. Um, today, we're going to focus on Office add-ins, all right? And it looks like the person that asked the question has already answered their own question. Um, but here is the entire webinar series that we've done. So we first did Microsoft Identity, then we did Microsoft Graph, then we did SharePoint, then we did Teams, and today we're doing Office add-ins. And, and the one that were the previous ones, if you go to the link at the bottom of the slide, it's all lowercase, and the color coding is just there to make it more readable. Um, but the, the link at the bottom of the slide will take you to a blog post that has each one of the different uh, webinars that we've done um, with a recording that you can watch um, on demand uh, as you see fit if you happen to miss any of them. The recording for this one will also be posted um, as well. I think I'll ha I should have it posted later today um, because the new, the new style I started recording, the way I started recording these was, uh, is working out really well. So I was able to push that out a lot faster this time, which is what we're going to do uh, hopefully today. If you're interested, we have one more that we're doing on Thursday. And like I said, that's the behind the scenes one. So it's a great place to come and ask like general questions um, about the certification. I'm going to share with you what my experience was like, um, how I was involved, and just some just some general stuff on it so it should be it should be interesting it's a great place to ask the questions today we're going to really i'm going to really try and focus on only having only addressing any questions that show up that are related to the technology that we're going to be focusing on um, today which is office add-ins i don't want to go i don't want to go off and don't talk about sharepoint stuff or team stuff uh, today because that's not what this focus is all about now, when it comes to the office, when it comes to office add-ins, what you know, how much of a how much of the exam does it make up? So it's it's like the Teams section was, which is it, it takes up about fifteen to twenty percent of the questions that you'll find on the exam. Um, there's also some self-paced learning content that is available for you um, as well, and you can see that uh, from there on the um, uh, on the slide. Um, I wrote all that content. Well, yeah, I wrote all of that content, all of the learning paths, the five learning paths that are out there for each one of the workloads. Um, I authored all that content. So um, that was my involvement in terms of self-paced study stuff. And that stuff is freely available. It's wide out there. Anybody can can go take a look at it. Oh, SharePoint talk, topics, that's wrong. It should have been Office add-in topics. Let's get off that slide quick. Sorry about that. All right, so now let's start diving into some of the things. What do you need to know? now? Be it's office add-ins and there really isn't a lot of different areas for me to focus here. I've only got about four or five slides today, okay? So if you got any questions, send them my way, right? We got, we're gonna have lots of stuff that we can go into. We're not doing any of the, remember, and again, too, just as a reminder, I do see a bunch of new people in here today. Um, we're not, I'm not focusing on like teaching you the tech. This is a how do I get certified? What things do I need to know? And I'm not going to teach you those things. It's just what do I need to know? So you need to understand fundamental concepts related to um, office add-ins. Fundamental concepts. So for example, what is the difference between a task pane and a content pane or a content add-in? What does it mean by that, right? Task pane being the things that go in the right-hand margin inside of 
clients like Outlook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, um, a content add-in that makes sense in things like, um, uh, like a, uh, inside of Word or Excel or PowerPoint. Um, and then and further, um, and it doesn't say on the slide, but you do need to understand the other kind of an add-in when you work inside of Outlook, where it will show on an, a mail uh, compose or uh, read or view panel, um, or when you're composing or viewing a meeting uh, from your calendar. You need to understand how to work with dialogue. So how do you surface a dialogue from an add-in to prompt the user with for, inf for information or to display information? Um, and you need to understand also how to implement custom functions. These are little JavaScript functions that you write that are loaded in the add-in that show up and will be um, that you can execute from your add-in. Um, you need to understand add-in commands as well. So what does that mean? That's like those are the buttons in the ribbon that you want to add. How do I go through and create one of those? How do I respond to when one of those is clicked? What kind of things can I do? Can I create just a button or can I create like a whole button with like sub buttons inside of it? Right? What can you do with that? Um, you also need to understand, and it's the, the, the thing they tell you need to understand, it says understand the purpose of the manifest. You need to understand the manifest. You need to understand how to declare these things. You need to understand the components, like the different sections in the manifest. Why, what, you know, how is some stuff used? What are the values that you would have in some of those things? Um, some of the other stuff too that, you, that it, I don't have here on the slide that you are going to need to know as well is what does the general development story look like? Right? What does the general dev story look like for building an add-in? What are you doing? Right? Are you creating a server-side thing and, and uploading it, installing it inside of, inside of Outlook? You need to understand what that story is going to end up being like. So we'll come back to that in just a minute. Let's talk a little bit now about the piece that's going to allow us to have our add-in talk to the hosting application. And that's Office JS. That is a JavaScript library that we have to include in all of our add-ins. And you need to know like some of the special, some of the required pieces to it, not special, but some of the required pieces to it. For instance, you have to know that you're going to, when you create your add-in, you have to know that you, that you have to call a method called initialize. You have to implement it in Office JS and you have to respond give a result back within five seconds of the office app calling your add-in because if it doesn't happen then the office app is going to disable your add-in and show some sort of user experience that tells the user sorry i can't and that's too that's too expensive okay um the uh so you need to understand that that, that or not expensive that's not working right and that way Microsoft's really doing that to make sure that people that are using Outlook or Word, uh, that they don't think that Outlook or Word is broken. They want to make sure that they understand that, hey, it's this random person's add-in. We, Microsoft, everything's fine with Word. So that's why they do that. Um, you need to understand what the programming model uh, looks like. What are the developer tools? And that kind of goes back to what I mentioned just a second ago. You're going to be creating essentially a web app. And that web app is going to be surfaced inside of the Office client in an iframe. And that iframe is either going to be surfaced, is either going to be displayed as a task pane, or it's going to be, it's going to show up as a, um, like a, as a content box inside of uh, like a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet, uh, Excel workbook. Okay. Um, you need to understand, you know, there are, Office JS has different sections of the API for each one of the different clients. So like there's a whole section about that you would use if you're working with Excel. So how do you get access to a cell inside of Excel? How do you get access to a table or a name? How do you make a named range? How do you insert charts and graphs and stuff? That stuff's all in, on the exam. Um, same thing with Outlook. How do you get access to the header of an email or to the body of an email? How do you make it so that your add-in will appear when you find sp content, like specific content inside of an email? Like for example, if I built an add-in, I could check to see if 
my if the content of the email contains um, a UPS tracking number or a Federal Express tracking number. And if it did, then I want my add-in to show up to where someone could click on it and it would open up in the email and show a map of where it is with the history of the tracking information in my package. Um, same thing for a word, right? How do I get a range of text? How do I insert a paragraph? How do I insert a picture? How do I format content? Um, you need to understand how to do those things. Um, PowerPoint, similar story. How do I work with PowerPoint? How do I work with the different elements inside of PowerPoint, creating a new slide, creating a new section, stuff like that. Um, and then the last one is how do you create custom functions and what can you do with a custom function? How does it work? You're going to create a JavaScript file. It's going to load on the, in your in your client and you just map that JavaScript function to one of the buttons you put in the ribbon. So when someone clicks the button in the ribbon, what happens? Now, you also need to understand some of the customization things of add-ins. So this is the stuff that gets where I think add-ins start to get a little more complicated, a little more tough. Um, for example, you can implement your user experience. Excuse me. You can implement your user experience um, using Office UI Fabric. How would you do that? What limitations do you have for that? What what is it? What, what are the implications for that? What things are required? Um, you also need to understand how do I persist like settings or persist state in my add-in. So with add-ins, I have the ability to like let's say I open up a um, I create an add-in for Word, and I want to have specific settings that I that I store. Um, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, sorry, someone just added a comment. I'm not sure what they're, what they're referring to. Um, so what, what that's essentially saying is, is that you, you need to be able, how do I, how do I have set, like define settings in my add-in and save those settings when I'm using it on like Outlook desktop or an Excel desktop on Windows? And then if I go over to my iPad or I go over to my phone or I go over to the web experience, those same settings are available to me. Okay. So I have all that, I have those different things that are, uh, how do I go through and work with settings in state uh, between the applications? You also need to understand when, when can you and how do you use Microsoft Graph within your add-in? Because if you're, when you're working with your add-ins, you're almost always working with people who are using Office 365. And in that case, then your number one API that you want to use to be able to go get data about the current user or content inside of uh, Microsoft 365 is Microsoft Graph. Microsoft Graph though requires authenticated requests. So how do you authenticate from your add-in? How do you obtain an access token? How do you call uh, Microsoft Graph from the add-in and get that data? Those are things you need to make sure you're aware of and know how to do those things because you will be tested on that. The next thing, I think this might be the last thing, the last slide about this stuff. Um, what does deployment look like? How do I test? And this, I guess, in, in my opinion, this is one of the more challenging aspects to working with Office add-ins. Um, testing is tough. And it's because you need to host your app inside of another experience. But it... It, it can be tricky and it's kind of like teams, but I think I find it harder with office add-ins. When you create something for office, you there's two pieces to it. You have to register your add-in with the office client and then you have to host your add-in application, right? And so that's gonna be done like on local, generally you're gonna host your application on a local host on your local machine, but then you gotta get that manifest file, that, that, that big XML file and you gotta somehow install that into the Office clients. And there's a couple different ways you can do it. There's a couple of ways you can run this. Um, you can you know, test your stuff through the, the browser-based clients uh, in Office. I find that to be the easiest. Um, the other option that you can do um, is you can uh, do it, um, sideload it, uh, your add-in into your local install of Word or Excel or PowerPoint or Outlook. Um, and how do you go about doing that? So you need to understand like what that those things mean. How do I sideload? How do I do a deployment? What does my ultimate you know deployment look like? 
when I want to go to when I want to go to production and make my add-in available to everybody else uh, in the world and let them let them go about using it. So you've got to go through and figure out those different things. Like what you have to know those different uh, things and how uh, because you will be tested on those um, on how to deploy it, how to upgrade it, and all that stuff. Ah, there was one more that I, that's right. I want to make sure this is an important one. And this this kind of overlaps with something we talked about in the Teams workload. There's a concept called adaptive cards. And a, all an adaptive card is, is it's a block of JSON that you describe a user experience. And then when you give that, that JSON to different applications, like if you gave that, if you gave that to Teams or to uh, like a web experience or to Outlook, um, soon it'll be in like the Windows timeline. When you give that experience, when you give that that JSON to those different experiences, it'll get rendered in a, in the native experience for that client. So you can do the same thing with actionable messages. So what that is, an actionable message is in Outlook, is when you receive an email, and that email will render out an adaptive card, and you can. Um, uh, you the the, per, the person that, that receives the email can interact with that card and even submit the results or submit some feedback in the card and have that card be posted back to a, a RESTful service. And that RESTful service can process the response, but it can also respond back to Outlook, to Office 365, with a new card to refresh it. So like one of the labs I recent, that I built for that self-paced study content was... Um, we do a webinar review process. And so someone receives an email after they've attended a webinar and it says, what did you think? And you can put, you can rate it one, two or three, and then there's a comment section. And when they fill that in and hit submit, after a second, the, the card refreshes without ever leaving Outlook, it refreshes and shows the average score, the total responses and the last four or five uh, responses. And what's nice about adaptive cards that are uh, actionable messages is People don't, they can interact with something without ever leaving Outlook where they're already, where they're already living and they're already receiving the message. So it's a, it's a better experience. It's a, it's a more streamlined and quicker experience as well. What you need to understand um, as far as it goes with the, the exam is what are actionable messages? So what I just explained, and then what kind of capabilities do you have with this? What can you do? And adaptive cards there's, there was something called, and this gets a little confusing, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tip here. There was an actionable messaging a card format, and that is like the legacy thing, and that still works, but it's been like, I don't wanna say deprecated because I don't think that's, an, I don't think that's official, but I, if I were you, I would treat it as something being deprecated. And instead, you should use a new adaptive card um, uh, protocol and format because that actually came from, it was inspired by actionable messages. So the new one is adaptive cards. What you're doing is you're sending an adaptive card to Outlook that is going to be rendered as an actionable message. So the thing in Outlook, it is an actionable message, but you, to get the actual message, you have to send an email with an adaptive card in it. So understand what kinds of things you can do. But not only that, you need to also understand how can you refresh it? How do you receive uh, and how do you process the HTTP request from Outlook when someone interacts with the card? Um, you need to understand like you need to validate a token. What does that mean? What, how can you check to make sure? What kinds of security things should you check for to ensure that you're receiving something that you expected to receive? Stuff like that. Thing, those are things you definitely need to know. Another thing that you need to know is... Um, how do I respond and refresh the card? Like what HTTP header do I have to use? How do I respond if there's a problem? How do I respond without refreshing a card and to just give some feedback and say, yes, that was successful. What do you do there? Um, you need to understand how to do all that stuff. And you also need to understand what are the registration requirements for this because you do have to register your web service and what does that mean? What do you, what do you have to do? Where do you do that? Um, what are the limitations? What can you do as a, as a, when you're doing development and testing things versus what, what can you do when you go into production?
You need to figure that stuff out, okay? All right, uh, let's see. I think that's it on my actual messages, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so that, we finished like 30 minutes into this. I didn't think it was gonna take the whole time either. Um, that's Those are all the things that you need to know about Office add-ins. It's not a ton of stuff when you compare it to things like Identity and Graph, Microsoft Graph and Microsoft Teams and SharePoint. But each one of those different topics we touched on, like when I, I have one bullet for, you need to know Office JS for Excel. That's a big topic. You need to know Office JS for Word. Again, a big topic. And then the same thing for Outlook and for PowerPoint. I only remember questions on Excel. There were in Outlook primarily very, very few on PowerPoint. In fact, I didn't get one for PowerPoint, but I, that doesn't mean that you wouldn't get one because it's a pool of questions that you're going to get at, that you get when you take the exam. Um, and you will receive a subset of the pool of all the questions they wrote. Um, there was some on Word, but not much. Um, it's a lot more like general Office add-in style questions of things you need to know. Okay. So again, Office add-ins, another one of the workloads you need to know, just like one of these other five, uh, of four other one of the other four workloads. Quick little reminder. Oh, and if you have any questions, so I didn't get any questions about the content here. If you got any questions, now's a good time to go ahead and post them. If I don't get any questions, we're not going to leave the webinar going for a whole hour uh, unless, I mean, I'm happy to, but there's no sense in just leaving it here if nobody, no, nobody has any questions. Um, ah, sweet. So there's a couple questions coming. So definitely, if you have a question coming, now's a good time to go ahead and post them. Wow, everyone just all said, you were holding on to those for a while. Sweet. Um, just to wrap up this slide here in case anybody leaves. Actually, I have two, I, I'm gonna wrap this up and let me ask another question and then I'll start answering these other ones. Um, so first, uh, the um, if, you, if you missed any of the webinars, you can see the link there on the slide on where you can go to actually see the recorded version um, of, the, um, uh, of all these different webinars. And again, I will have this one today posted as well. And love to see you join us, uh, join me again on Thursday when uh, for the, at the same time for a little bit of behind the scenes stuff. Much more casual, well, this is pretty casual, but be much more casual. Um, anything actually would be cool is if you have anything that you would like to see in that webinar, like kind of stuff that you'd like, let me, send me, a, send me a mail, right? Or just reply in the, in the chat here to let me know what kinds of things you'd be interested in to see. I plan on covering you know, what was the experience like? How do we go about identifying stuff? How does the, how's the whole project progress from, you know, who's involved? Um, how long does it take? How they write questions? Um, how they evaluate the questions, not only when they were writing them, but also when they uh, were, after that people started taking the exam, stuff like that. Um, what the experience is like taking the exam, like if you do it remote, because you have the ability to do it from home. Uh, that's a heck of an experience. So that's all stuff that I plan on, on going through. And again, the recording is there um, if you're interested. Now, another thing that I'm doing as well is that um, I, so as I said earlier, uh, I have a SharePoint framework development course uh, that I, that I, I'm, uh, that I sell through my training, my training company. Um, still working on that. In fact, last week we published a chapter on working with uh, content or integrating DevOps, continuous integration and continuous delivery with SharePoint Framework. Um, got another chapter should be publishing in the next week and a half. So by the end of next week on uh, continuous monitoring with Azure App Insights. And then I have two more chapters I'm planning for that one. When that course is done, I'm likely going to build some sort of a boot camp for getting for passing uh, uh, guidance for passing the MS 600 exam. And it's something I'm curious if that's something you guys would be interested in. So I just posted a chat here or a poll here on if it's something you were interested in. Um, before anybody asks, I'm sure this can influence your, your thing. You're saying, well, how long is the course? How much is it going to be? When's it going to be available? The when's it going to be available? I don't know. I can't say that just yet because it's, you know, a lot of things change. Um, my goal is to get it out quick. Uh, but that's going to be like, I mean, July, August, something like that. 
Um, so I'm not sure what your timeline is on taking it. Um, pricing though, it's not going to be a very long course and it's not going to be a, because I'm going to, I'm going to leverage a lot of the content that I built for Microsoft. I'm going to point you to that content for like self-paced stuff. Instead, I want to just guide you and give you a place to ask questions as well. Um, and give you the tips and tricks of the stuff that we don't have in the content, what things you need to know and what's the best way to, to take and pass the exam. Um, pricing goal is to make it below $250. I'd love for it to be less than that. We just have to see, but again, we're just in the planning phases. So cool. Thank you very much for those of you who answered that. So let me go through and let me answer, let me go ahead and address some of these questions that we've got. I'm going to switch over to camera instead of that other slide. All right, so I've got five questions here. So first question is, is there a version of Microsoft Office that's required for adaptive cards? I found that mine didn't render correctly from Flow, even though I'm using Office 2019, but they do work with Outlook that's online. Uh, so it's hard to say. Um, adaptive cards are only Outlook. Um, the documentation specifies where they are supported. Yes, there is a specific version. I don't know it offhand. I know that the web version definitely does. I know that the Windows version for 2019, Outlook for in Office 2019 does. I can't remember if the previous one does. Outlook on Mac does not support it right now. And Outlook on mobile for iOS and Android does support it. Um, if you're using the actionable message format, then it does not work on mobile. Only the adaptive card format works for actionable messages on mobile. So that was from Mr. Anonymous. Uh, Joseph, Joseph A, question. With a registration required and the need to host it on a server somewhere, is it similar to SharePoint add-ins where we were just building prior to SharePoint framework was released? Yeah, I mean, it's like it's like SharePoint add-ins. It's like uh, Microsoft Teams-based stuff. You, you build something, a manifest, that you're going to install. And I put that in quotes because it's just, in the case of Office add-ins, it's XML. Uh, I guess in the case of SharePoint add-ins, it was XML. In the case of Teams apps, it's JSON. You're going to install that into the hosting client. And then you have to host the application itself somewhere. The web app has to be hosted somewhere. Um, when you're doing development, you're going to do that on your laptop or on your desktop. Um, when you're in production, you're going to do that someplace that can serve up an HTTPS endpoint. Azure, an Azure web app, an Azure function. I mean, it's up to you. But yes, that's very. it's similar to how that all works. Uh, Ralph. What type of use cases are covered in the questions? Part of the issue for scoring is that folks rarely architect this as a solution. So knowing how they think should be used helps prepare. Yes. Okay. So there, there's no specific scenario that comes to mind that you're, that you need to know. Um, it's, and I wouldn't really focus so much on scenarios. I would focus more on like capabilities. How do I read and write to an Excel workbook, worksheet? How do I read and write to Word? How do I, I guess, read and write? Let's see, what is it? So for Outlook, it's, it is read and write. It's how do I, but I can't remember if you get tested on the calendar items. I do remember questions about emails. So it's, how, when someone opens up an email or they're reading an email, how do I get information from that email, like from the body or from the header? And then if it's, if I'm writing, if somebody's composing a new email, how do I write to that email? Um, that's the kind of stuff that you need to know how to do. Um, this goes on to the next, to somebody else's question. Michael's question says, is it, what recommend, what, what do you, what do you recommend as ways to prepare for the office add-in portion of the test? At the beginning of this webinar, I mentioned a learning path um, on Microsoft Learn. Um, that is what I would recommend. Um, as some background, 
when and I'll cover more of it and this you'll actually you get a you get a little bit better I think you get a really good idea of how you should prepare for this and how do you evaluate if you have the experience level to pass this exam if you come to the webinar on Thursday um, but provide since we have the time the way that the way that we built the certification, the way it was it was constructed, is it kind of follows this path and then it spiderwebs out in a couple different directions. And one of those directions is an exam. So what we do is we got together last year twice um, where we defined all the different topics. It was kind of like it was a just what is possible? What could you be tested on? Don't think about timing. Just what could you be tested on? What level of knowledge should you have to do this? Um, and we had this giant list and then we came for each one of the workloads and then we came back, um, a month or two later, a month later, I think, and we started to scope it. And first we made sure of, yes, this is a foundational level knowledge. This is an, an, an associate level knowledge. This is expert level knowledge. And then we had to prioritize stuff. What things could we put in different buckets and what things need to be that people have to know that the outcome of that was a spreadsheet that had a, like a giant manifest of here's the topic. Here are the topics that people should know. That spreadsheet was given to three different groups to go build out the certification. So that is now the spec for the certification. Essentially one group wrote the questions for the exam. I was not involved with that group. Um, I, I was I was involved in these uh, these first two things I just mentioned. I was not involved. Once we started spider webbing, I only went one direction. Um, and the reason I went one direction is for conflict of interest reasons, um, which I'll explain more about on in the next webinar on Thursday about the bonus stuff. For those of you watching the recording of this, that's the behind the scenes webinar. So make sure you watch that one if you want. If that's what I'm referring to now. Um, so one group that wrote the questions, they got that spreadsheet and they wrote questions based on what that spreadsheet said. People need to know these things. Another group got it to go write an instructor led training course on it. I was not involved in that group either. They wanted me to, but I, I was not involved in it. They asked me to, they asked me to, to, to do it and I, I turned it down. It was a conflict of interest again. Um, and then the third group individual that got that spreadsheet and said, build content for this was the group that built the self-paced training content. That was me. So I wrote the self-paced training content. So what do I mean by that? So why do I share with this with why I share it with you? Because all the content, all the questions are based on what that spreadsheet was. All the content that I built in the self-paced content on Microsoft learning. So all those different learning paths and all the modules in each one of them, it's probably 25 ish modules. Um, all of that content, they all came from the same place. They all came from that spreadsheet, right? So that we use that as the inspiration to build all three of these different things, the exam questions, the instructor led course and the self paced training course. If you go through the self-paced training course and you feel all the, sorry, if you go through the self-paced learning paths, you feel comfortable with that entire office add-in section, should be good. Now it's not, don't think that it's everything that's on the self-paced content. I know everything on this and nothing else. Don't think you're gonna walk into the exam and you're not gonna, gonna get asked a question that it was not something you covered. So while like, for example, let's see, let me think of one in the self paced content. There's nothing about, there's no modules or training about creating add ins for PowerPoint. You may get a question about PowerPoint though, right? Stuff like that. So it's just you, it, it gives you an idea of, if I go through this one and it says, here's how you go through and extend Excel and you go through that entire module and it's like, feel pretty good. Here's how you go through and do the same thing with Word. Feel pretty good. There's not one for PowerPoint. 
Mm, based on what I learned about Excel and Word, I think I can kind of figure out the kind of things that you need to know for PowerPoint. So I need to go through and figure that, that stuff out too. That's, that's what I mean. That's how you would go. That's how I would approach it. But if you feel good about it, you'll be good. Um, now, granted, I've been doing this for a while. So I've been doing namely SharePoint development for 17 years. Um, but graph and identity, g development with graph and identity, as long as they've been around. Um, even longer, actually, because I guess I used the, the predecessor to graph, which was the, um, the universal API is what they called it. Uh, and the different Office 365 APIs. And then I also, uh, and I've been doing, I've done add-ins here and there for Office um, and doing Teams uh, development as well since Teams has been around. Um, so I've got, I have experience doing it, but I also did, I also wrote all the content. And when I went and took the exam, I intentionally did not study at all for it. I just went right in and said, let me just take it. Let me see how I do. And it shows that, you know, the things that I've got more experience in, I did better. And the things I have less experience in, like add-ins, I didn't do as good. Um, I mean, that's not surprising. So, but I felt comfortable that, you know, if I, if I, if I feel strong enough about these other areas, I only have to get a 70% or higher collectively on the entire exam. If add-ins are 15 to 20%, so upwards, so max would be 20% of the questions I'm going to receive. If I missed all all of them, which I didn't think I was going to do, I still was going to pass as long as I did okay. I did good on the other sections, which I felt comfortable with. So that's how I would look at it. Uh, Matt, will extend Microsoft 365 Fundamentals Learning Path be enough to prepare for this section of the exam? Absolutely not. Because foundational, if you remember from the beginning of my of this webinar, that what that. Um, Foundational level is not the level that you're being tested at. You're being tested at the associate level. And that's where all the, the, the foundational level is, is not intended to get you ready for all the, for, for this exam. The foundational level is just a, you know, what's possible kind of a thing. Um, I did the foundation, I built the foundational content as well. And I, and that you, if you only studied that, there's no chance you're going to pass. That's not going to be enough. Okay, I have no more questions. If you got a question, now's a good time to post it um, or raise your hand to let me know that you're about to post a question so I don't shut the webinar off on you too, too quick. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I hope you've gotten a lot out of this series. Um, would really appreciate it if you told people about it. Um, again, all of them are recorded so everybody can watch it. Um, that's the, you know, I did these for free, uh, and it's, uh, honestly, it's part to generate, to see what interest there would be for the, uh, for a boot camp course that I, I'd like to work on. I'd really like to do it and I'm, I'm going to do it. It just, it's, um, I just gotta go through and sit down and to, to plan the thing out, but got my other course I want to finish first. So I'm going to knock that guy out first. I actually wasn't going to do this, um, but I was surprised at the amount of interest that, uh, that, that there was in it. Um, and I was, I was, I was, I was very interested. I was surprised at how many people said that they wanted me to do this. So I was like, okay, this is stupid. Just ignore it. So let's go there and do this. So I kind of moved the schedule around a little bit to make sure to do this. Uh, to, not just the webinar series, but the course, the uh, the a boot camp course as well. I don't see anybody raising their hands, so I don't see a reason to keep our webinar going for another eleven minutes just to fill up the time. So if you would, please tweet this uh, about it or put it on Facebook or send it to your friends. Um, send them the link to that webinar series I'd really to, that you see there on the slide. Actually, let me show you the slide. Where is it? It's here. It's right there. Um, to help other people actually see it, to, to jump in and um, uh, just gives me a hand. I appreciate it. Social media is always good. LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. I don't think Pinterest applies, <laughs> but whatever. At any rate, thank you very much. No other questions. So I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. I hope everyone has a fabulous day and I will see you next time.